Good morning subscribers. You join me once again in video four of four in this series, which is the positive production externality diagram and its derivation. So we are talking about production. You will know that when we talk about production, we mean supply rather than demand. Therefore, when we do our diagram, we are looking to add two supply curves in the first instance rather than two demand curves and from there we can label those as appropriate. When we're considering a positive production externality we are of course considering therefore the case um, whereby the private costs to the firm are actually quite high because of whatever it is that they are doing in their production process but as a consequence of whatever it is that they do this clean-up operation there are benefits to society, there are external benefits and as a consequence, the private costs here are higher, are greater than the social costs. There's obviously a cost to the firm, but there's a benefit, there's a greater benefit to society here because the costs being imposed upon society are actually being reduced. Now, in your textbooks, those of you who are studying OCR, for example, in the uh, book two, the year two textbook, you will find that the example quoted there is of a manufacturing plant which is cleaning up its waste which is being pumped into a river and at the bottom of the river or at the end of the river there is a salmon farm and so whenever the production facility goes about cleaning up the waste there's an external benefit to the salmon farm downstream because its costs are reduced because um, these negative damaging external costs which may of course uh, kill and endanger some of the fish then that is removed and so the social costs are reduced. You can think of it for example I guess um, car manufacturers and the addition of catalytic converters to cars well as catalytic converters are added to cars that's obviously a cost to the private firm however there is a wider benefit to society because the external costs are reduced. So you'll be familiar, ladies and gentlemen, with our equation, MSC equals MPC plus MEC. The marginal social cost is equal to the private cost plus the marginal external cost. And we'll be considering those things on this diagram. So let's get to that diagram, ladies and gentlemen. So we're talking about supply here, if it's production. So you know by now we need two supply curves one and two. We therefore also know that the private costs here to the individual firm are actually very high and as a consequence the individual firm may not do as much of this clean-up operation as society would wish. So as a consequence we can therefore say that this first equilibrium point A must be the point of allocative of inefficiency if you will, Q1 at P1 and so this is the marginal private cost. However, as a consequence of the firm's actions, they actually lower the cost to society. There is a benefit to society. And so we can therefore also say that we would wish the firm would rather than uh, do this production at A, we'd rather that production was at B for the benefit of society to get to this point here, Q2 at P2, which you of course know as the socially optimum equilibrium level of output. So we want price to go in this direction and we want the quantity or the production to go in this direction to increase. And we also therefore can finish this off by saying that this must be the marginal social cost. Okay, so that's where we're at ladies and gentlemen with the diagram. What about then the deadweight welfare loss as the result of the restriction of output to Q1, which is obviously the allocatively inefficient level, what, what cost is being imposed upon society? Well, as I've told you in all previous videos here, we work from Q1 and we go up and we identify the triangle as it happens to be once again, ladies and gentlemen, so we're just going to label this point C. So if we're operating at Q1, Point A here lies on the social benefit curve. 
Point C here lies on the social cost curve. So clearly, benefits are greater than costs. It is worth producing at least one more unit to exploit the additional benefits. So if we move along another unit, there's your benefit, there's your cost. Is it worth producing another unit to exploit any further potential benefits? Of course it is, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have another one. Benefit greater than cost. Benefit greater than cost. Until we get all the way to point B, where we have fully exploited all of those uh, benefits to society. And so consequently, ladies and gentlemen, we are left with this triangle, A, B, C. Let's just highlight that. And that, as you well know, that is our deadweight welfare loss. That's the DWL. The deadweight welfare loss, the loss imposed upon society. And why is that a why is that happening? It's a result of the restriction of the output below its most efficient level. Its most efficient level being, of course, not Q1, we want to get output to Q2 the most efficient level, the socially optimum level of output. So you can see why firms, governments, etc., they all come together and their, their whole aim, their whole intention, particularly nowadays with policies regarding pollution and the environment and so on, is to increase output. Interesting on the Economist Espresso this morning, for example, uh, one of the articles was featuring uh, India. And there's a picture of people cycling along in India, barely able to see in front of them because of the smog. And perhaps they would benefit from some type of policy whereby firms are incentivized to clean up their production methods. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. The next in the series of the externality diagrams obviously then considers, well, how do we get from A to B? What, what, what can the government do to encourage that? And I look forward to bringing you that in the very near future, ladies and gents, but bye for now.